This was like all cool for a second. I'm seeing like all these cute little animals and I just saw a snake. And I'm not educated enough to know if these snakes are poisonous. <laughs> oh Lord. May the Mayan gods be with me. That's all I have to say at this point. I don't even know. <laughs> and Gervasio, Mayan ruins in Cozumel, Mexico. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I was recently in Cozumel and visited on my own the Mayan ruins. So here is the main entrance. Admission, I didn't think was that bad. It's about 216 pesos or about 12.50 um, US dollars. Now here they actually have um, the payments separated. So you have to pay here first. Um, this is where you pay for the state. And then you walk a little bit further down as you're getting into uh, the ruins. And then you have to pay for the um, federal fee. But altogether it is 1250 USD or that 200 and whatever um, I just said. <laughs> <laughs> my memory has not that great lately guys so as soon as you walk in everything is pretty self-explanatory it's a straight run to the um, actual ruins but here they do have a souvenir shop and then like a snack bar and stuff like that where you can get some drinks and stuff afterwards because it is a long walk so from this diagram i didn't even do um <clears throat> the entire the entire tour because it was just so, so long. Um, and I was totally unprepared for this guys. So it was definitely, um, you know, I got really a lot of the good parts, but still not all. So here, what he just pointed to is that if you want to record, which I was absolutely, which I was obviously doing, you do have to pay 50 pesos more on top of the admission um, you know, fee that I already had to pay and they give you a sticker. I had to put that right onto my device. Um, so overall it actually ended up costing me about like 1450 ish, um, because 50 pesos is about $2 and 75 cents right now with the, um, exchange rate, it's probably around $3. Um, so yeah, it was probably closer to, I spent like $15 all in all, um, you know, for the general admission. Now, if you are doing this, um, as an excursion, because you are from one of the cruise ships that come onto the island, unfortunately, I cannot, uh, give you what, you know, would be like a base price as, you know, they would be giving you transportation. I'm assuming they would give you some type of food or drink if you're going to be out here all day. Um, but for those that are exploring the island as I was, that is what the price is for just the general admission. Now, you can see here that there was a group of people there and then they did actually have a tour guide. I very, very highly, very, very, <laughs> I highly recommend definitely getting a tour guide if you are going to be coming to do this um, you know, on your own. I didn't want to do a tour guide because I, I really wanted to be able to kind of just film what I wanted to film, um, you know, because this is such a big place. Now, if you saw my other excursion on Cozumel where I went to the Mayan Bee Sanctuary, which is actually very, very close to the Mayan ruins here, um, you know, that tour, it's a smaller area. The sanctuary is smaller. So it was, um, you know, great that I had the tour guide and I did a full tour there. So it was, um, you know, got all the really good information from the, the tour guide there. But because this place was so big and I kind of wanted to be able to really just go on my own, I did not get a tour guide. But that tour guide there, I mean, he was explaining to them like, even like a rock that was on uh, the floor and like a, a, you know, like a little leaf or something that was from a particular uh, tree. So it was definitely uh, pretty cool that, uh, you know, they had the tour guide. And actually, while I was at the, the first place that I stopped at, I did end up um, getting stopped by one of the tour guides that was here and, you know, asked me if I wanted any help. 
as I was because as I was looking at this ruin here, you can see how small that's supposed to be a door. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it like, why is this door so small? Like were the Mayans this small? <laughs> And he had explained to me that the reason why they're so small is because they made these for their gods. So they had gods um, that were basically like the size of dwarfs. So they made, you know, that house small for them because, you know, they were like dwarf gods. Now, I'm not going to lie. As I proceeded into, um, you know, the actual ruins itself and realized how large it was, I was very upset that I did not take that tour guide up on his offer. He had offered to do the tour with me. Um, unfortunately, I am very, very used to traveling alone. And, um, you know, I always have my guard up sometimes. So I was a little unsure if he was really a tour guide or not. It wasn't until the end that I saw him in the front and I was like, okay, he really was. Um, maybe I should have you know, got him uh, for the tour. So definitely I recommend getting a tour guide. So what I was just pointing at though, is that you could see that there, um, you know, it was kind of like there, they were seats in there. So everything in these um, ruins are just, it's so amazing to see like what they built thousands of years ago and how it's still standing. So here, this is actually like a gateway. So, or like the archer, you know, um, I don't know how to like really explain it, but it's, it's like, well, it's obviously arched, but this is a gateway. So they built this. So basically, you know, the gods had like a gateway to go through. So this is in the middle of a lot of the different houses um, and tombs or temples, excuse me, that they have um, on this like, you know, mine ruin site, because what they do again, it's that like arch gateway that um, welcomes the gods to come in to the actual, um, you know, presence or space of, you know, what they built them here, which again was like the temples and the houses and everything else, which I mean, just looking at it, it's it's just so crazy, you know, look, just thinking about how long these things were built and made. And if you are like a history, I don't want to say junkie, but I kind of am like, I love history. I love going to places. I love traveling and just immersing myself into their culture. I absolutely, um, you know, it's just things like that just really astonish me. And it's just so magical and exciting to really just think about how long ago this was and why they did it. Oh, boy. You're literally like walking through the forest, just so you guys know. I am wearing sandals. Make sure you wear sneakers. Um, my sandals are pretty flat, so I feel a little bit more... Um, grounded I guess you can say but if I would have known I definitely would have wore sneakers so heads up okay so now we're coming up to Nehok Na I hope I'm saying these correctly um you know this is in ancient Mayan so uh, I do not speak that fluently I am still perfecting my Spanish uh, but this was or is what they call the big house um, and this is where a lot of like the, like, well, not really a lot of, but like the leader was basically at, so they didn't have it, uh, boarded off. So I went up there and I just got a closer look. It was, um, empty inside. I was kind of hoping maybe, uh, there, there might've been some stuff in there where I would have been able to kind of see a little bit more of what was really inside there. It was it like a real, like living space or living quarters. But the cool thing about this is that this was made in between anywhere from like 13 to 1400 AD, which I, again, just think it's so cool. I find all like just old ancient archaeological sites just so, so fascinating. So, um, you know, it's just regardless, you know, it was empty, but it was still pretty cool to be able to just see inside of there and kind of think about you know, the things that been doing, like, were they doing rituals in there? Like, what was their daily routine? 
Another very big piece of advice, guys, is bring mosquito spray. I am allergic to mosquitoes, not in the sense of like, you know, I'm gonna go into like anaphylactic shock, but I just have very sensitive skin. So when I get bit, I get welts all over me, um, <laughs> which I don't know why I thought I shouldn't have brought that or put myself, um, you know, got myself prepared this morning, but I'm pretty sure I am not the only one that this has happened to and won't be in the future. So that is why I am pre-warning you right now. Definitely sneakers and sunblock and mosquito spray. That's what I really wanted to say. Look at this little guy. Oop. <laughs> they used to, they all would go into the holes and I'm just like, I didn't even realize that was a hole in there. So as soon as you get too close, they're like, boop, and they go right into the hole. They do not want to be bothered at all, but it was really exciting seeing um, all of them like all around the grounds. So this here, I, I had to get a video of this. These red trees I, they were just so fascinating to me. They looked like they were wet, but they're not. And like, you could see right next to it, like even the roots, how red they are and everything else. But the tree right next to it was dry and like, looked like it was dying. Those red trees were like the coolest thing to me ever. So here is, um, another temple, Petna, as you could see on that, um, you know, the little, what are those things called? Oh God, here we go. S Greek, Spanish, English, all in my head. In Greek, it's called like a little tabella, a sign. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We did it. <laughs> so here was, um, <clears throat> excuse me. This was actually like another kind of like prayer ground, I guess you can say or whatever. So this one was a lot larger. Like there was three kind of sections. There was that like round area there. You have um, like a kind of sitting area in the back, another house here where I was right there. And these circular things um, are actually seats. So, or from what I thought or assumed they were seats, please do not uh, like mark me on that or hold me accountable for that. Again, I highly recommend getting the tour guide. I just like kind of, uh, you know, going in my own pace and just seeing things, um, you know, through my own eyes, I guess you can say. But the other backstory, <clears throat> excuse me, about um, these Mayan ruins is that they have the Temple of Ixchel. So if you do not know, the um, Mayans believed in several or many, many uh, gods. There wasn't just one. They had, you know, gods for all different things. So this specific, um, you know, these ruins and these temples all of this um, is really for the goddess Ixchel, who is the goddess of fertility. And when you actually walk in, um, in the beginning, if you saw at one point when we were walking in, there is like a picture of what looks like a Mayan god, um, you know, like an old kind of Mayan drawing. And that Mayan drawing is the um, drawing of the god Ixchel, who is again, the god of fertility. So I absolutely love, 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 love this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just again, archaeological sites, history, everything else. And actually, San Gervasio, and again, I hope I'm saying this correctly, um, was actually awarded by uh, UNESCO, this being as a cultural heritage site. So that is definitely um, pretty cool to kind of, uh, you know, just like think about or, you know, uh, be here and know that this is definitely ha has been, um, you know, taken into consideration that way because this is, these are the mine ruins and they are just absolutely uh, amazing and what has really just gone on in Mexico and the history and the culture here is just absolutely amazing. One thing, oop, there you go again. <laughs> they just always go into these random holes. Um, and just, you know, one thing that I just really, really love about Mexico itself and living here is the history that is here. Um, the energy that is here, their, their beliefs and everything else. Um, is just really, it's just really magical.
So now we are walking towards the other temple that they call Las Manitas. But if you look to the right, that is their old walkway that they used to have. This one that I'm on right now is the newly paved one. But those old walkways in ancient Mayan were, um, are called Sacabe. So if you kind of can see, I mean, right now there is wear and tear. But in the middle of those Sacabe, they normally would put white rocks. So what that does is that during the evening times and during the moonlight, that those white rocks would be able to um, kind of be lit up in a sense from the moonlight. So that way they were able to see at nighttime while they were walking through their villages and through, um, you know, their temples and um, you know this entire site so that's absolutely amazing I you know I did um, know about that <clears throat> excuse me before coming here and then after walking through here and seeing that I was like oh those are the sakbiz, um that I had recently learned about which was really amazing so definitely guys come here check it out get a tour guide wear your sneakers wear your sunblock and definitely bring mosquito spray thanks so much for watching and i will see you guys soon subscribe and like